Welcome to the video tutorial on how to use StatMiner for the TIPCO Spotfire application. This tutorial will give you an overview on how to start working with StatMiner, including preparing an example analysis from the QPCR wizard and getting all the quality reports and differential expression results based on the default analysis settings. Everything we need to configure our analysis is accessible from the StatMiner wizard. From this wizard, we will load our data define the experimental design and configure the analysis settings. Once configured, the wizard will automatically run the analysis, presenting us with all the analysis reports which are organized in the tabs. First decision that we need to take is the type of the workflow that we want to execute. This is a custom analysis focused on the applied microRNA version 1.0 cards. For any other analysis, it is recommended to run the real-time qPCR workflow in this step of the wizard, we will be able to get our data, prepare the experimental design, and configure analysis settings. After that, we will be ready to run the qPCR analysis. So let's start with the data files. In this demonstration, we are going to use a very simple data set representing just few types of brain tissues, namely amygdala, cerebellum, cortex, and the control group. After choosing the desired files from selected input folder, we only need to click on the OK button to import the data. StatMiner automatically supports a wide range of qPCR data files from various platforms. It is recommended to check frequently asked questions in order to get further details of the information that should be included in the input files and how to export data from the native platform software. In case StatMiner is unable to automatically recognize our data, the Customize Import Settings tool will help us to retrieve it. User Manual and Custom Data Reading Tutorial provide further details on this tool. OK, so let's load our data. In this example, we do not need to provide any efficiency information, so next step is to define the experimental design of the analysis. As we can see, our example consists of three tissues plus a control group, and each tissue has been replicated three times. We can assign one by one the biological group associated to each sample, but in this case we already have an external file including such configuration. Experimental Design Video Tutorial provides further details on how to create and save our own design, as well as dealing with samples distributed on different plates. That is all on the experimental design. Now let us continue with the analysis settings. StatMiner proposes a set of default analysis configurations, so we are now ready to perform the analysis. Let's first have a look at the Analysis Profile tool from where we can modify and configure the set of parameters and quality control of the analysis. For instance, this tool defines how to deal with the technical and biological replicates, how we want to flag expression values that have been poorly amplified, how to choose the best set of controls to normalize our CT data, and finally, the settings and configuration of our relative quantification and classification analysis. This is the relative quantification study, or the RQ, that we want to perform. This is the group that we want to use as a control and compare to all the tissues. Let's save these changes so that we can use this configuration at a later date. As we can see, Apart from the three default configurations with different levels of stringency for our analysis settings, we now also have a new template that can be used as many times as needed. Click and Go Execution will perform entire analysis in an automatic way relying on the settings that we have just defined. Once finished, StatMiner will display the result of the analysis organized by tabs. These reports can be classified into three main types. Firstly, a summary of the analysis with a whole overview of the sample and quality settings that can be presented for the analysis. A second type of report containing the results of the intermediate steps of the analysis, for instance, input data quality, technical outliers distribution, sample correlation, etc. As we can see, each report encloses the summary of settings applied to this step and potential warnings that could arise after applying the quality controls over our data, such as endogenous control selection and delta CT normalization, etc. And finally, a third type of report with the results of the expression and classification analysis of our qPCR data. 
These are the most interesting results and we will focus on these before finishing this tutorial. Regarding differential expression results, we first have a report where we can inspect how the detectors behave along all the conditions. For instance, in our example, the RQ of every detector along each tissue when it is compared with the control group. To better inspect these results, it is highly recommended to use the filters available on the right side of every report. For example, assuming we are interested in these three detectors only, we can select them and get a better view of how they are expressed along every tissue. The colours indicate potential flags in the expression level of the groups that we are comparing. For example, red colour alerts us to the fact that the expression values of these groups, amygdala, cerebellum and control are very low so we should not rely on these results. Blue ones indicate valid RQ comparisons. Average RQ reports summarise former information with the RQ average of each detector in every tissue and its deviation. Low deviation means that detectors behave in a very similar way along the conditions. Of the remaining expression reports left, let us get into the details of what happens with each individual comparison, for example, amygdala versus control, cerebellum and cortex. Again, the colour represents the results of these samples, indicating whether these might be better discarded from our conclusions because of their unusually low level of expression. Keeping just the valid ones for now, we can look at our regulated genes in this tissue. Regulated ones fall on the right side of the RQ distribution. All visualizations are synchronized, so a visual inspection allows us to confirm that the expression profile of regulated detectors is clearly lower than the control. On the other hand, downregulated detectors fall on the left side of the distribution. In this case, volcano plot can help us to identify non significant values. We will finish this tutorial with the remaining report on clustering analysis. This analysis groups all the detectors according to similar behavioral patterns of their delta CT and delta delta CT values. In this case, the biological replicates are expected to be included in the same group regarding the RQ clustering. In our example, the vertical classification allows us to identify tissues with similar behavior. That is all. We recommend that you continue this training by having a look at our data importing and experimental design tutorials.